Welcome, Dan Hardy, UFC legend. We're here to discuss boxing and MMA. We've got some statements in front of us, some you may agree with, some you may not. You can go first. MMA is a more exciting sport than boxing. Ooh, a more exciting sport than boxing. I don't know if I agree with that. Okay. I think that MMA is a fantastic sport. As a boxer, I'm a fan of MMA. Um, in particular, the UFC and the big fights and the production they put on, it's, it's unbelievable. But I think the best fights in MMA, for me, as a casual fan, is when they stand up mm -hmm. and they punch and they kick. So although we can have some boar fests and snooze fests in boxing, Mayweather, for example, brilliant boxer, but he done a lot of moving and his fights weren't that interesting. When you get two guys locking horns, punching it out with each other, I don't think there's a better spectacle in sport. I, I agree with you, but I also like it when people can kick each other and knee each other and help. And the thing is as well, like I, I, I love boxing and it can be very exciting if you've got two guys that have come to fight, but if you've mm. got someone that comes to clinch or two guys that are kind of unsure of one another, then you get a lot of clinching and it slows down there. Yeah. The referee has to keep getting involved in MMA it just keeps going. Like you get stuck in the clinch, someone's gonna elbow you in the face and take you down. So what about the, the amount of, of different ways that MMA can finish? It brings an unpredictability to it. No, no doubt it's an exciting sport, genuinely. Um, and there is that unpredictability about it. But again, like I'm, I'm just thinking of fights, like even a three round fight, we'll go back to Hagler Hearns, you know, two guys just locking horns. Mm -hmm. That fight was never going the distance. Examples like that, for me, it's, I mean, that, that's, it's spectacular. Yeah. Boxing is more skillful than MMA. Hmm. Now, that, see, that, this, is a, this is a good point because I've been thinking about this quite a lot. See, I would say that the, the boxing in boxing is more elite than the boxing in MMA. But the technique-wise, like the amount of stuff you have to gather to be a good mixed martial artist, there's a, a far, far broader spectrum of what you have to learn to become a, a successful MMA fighter. So although I agree that the, the refinement of the boxing is better in boxing, I feel like the, the broader skill set has to be mixed martial Look, arts. Look, I'm, I'm going to agree with that. Boxers at their best, the top boxers in the world are better boxers than MMA guys, but they have so many disciplines to, to be very good at. And I think the top MMA guys are good at the majority of them, yeah. if not all. The big fights happen more in MMA than boxing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So why do you think that is? Well I, well, I think there's the issue in boxing, one of the issues, and I think a lot of it's down to, you can blame Floyd Mayweather on this, mm. the, the, the zero, protecting that zero. We've seen some top MMA guys be involved in good fights and lose and continue to be involved in good fights. If boxing can take a leaf out of MMA's book, UFC in particular, where the top guys are forced to fight the top guys. When we see the top fights happening, like Spence Crawford we've seen recently, um, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable, but it's almost like a surprise. Yeah. It's a shock and it shouldn't be. It's like the stakes are too high almost yeah. to make those matches. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. It's, it's a little disappointing. I mean, like when I was younger, it was, it was Nigel Ben, Chris Eubank for me. And, and the rivalry between them, it, ju it just felt fortuitous that they were both in existence at the same time. Yeah. And I feel the same thing now with boxing. I feel like there are a lot of fighters and we're fortunate that they exist at the same time. But the unfortunate thing is that due to business and politics, they don't, they don't find themselves against one another. Like there are some fighters occasionally, like the, like the Khabib Namagomedovs, who they get to the top being undefeated. But then, you know, the ups and downs. I think BJ Penn was like 16 and 8 when he won the world title or something like that, you know? Like, Someone with a 16 and 8 record in boxing isn't winning the world title. Exactly. They wouldn't get the opportunity, yeah. would they? One of the issues, I think, for the big fights not happening, it's, a lot of it is politics. And you've got so many sanctioning bodies. Um, you, you have four guys at any one time can call themselves a world champion in a weight division. Uh, you know, to be the champ at UFC, there's only one, um, which is the way it should be. MMA is more dangerous than boxing. That's a quote from John Fury. Hmm. See, I don't think that's I don't think that's true. And and the reason being is because a lot of the damage in MMA, although it can be pretty drastic, it's very rare that those kind of things happen. Most of the time, it's superficial damage, it's cuts and swelling, those kind of things. 
for me, the danger in boxing is the hours and hours and rounds and rounds of sparring. Big Absolutely gloves, agree. headgear, just bam, 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 steady. Because like in MMA, like I've been into fights where I've not been hit at all and I've won or I've lost. And I've been into fights where I've hit them once and it, the fight's over. So there's, there are a lot, again, there are a lot more ways to win in mixed martial arts and not all of those ways are really damaging to the person you're fighting. And in preparation for a, for a boxing match, we do a lot of sparring. For one of my one of my fights, and it was the most rounds of sparring I ever done for a camp, was 220 rounds of sparring, for, which in hindsight now looking back, I didn't need to do that. In, in boxing, if someone gets dropped, gets knocked down, then the referee starts counting. Sometimes he waves the fight off and the fight's over. In the UFC, if you get dropped, you're still having to defend yourself from the ground. And sometimes you can get hit with elbows and you can get your head smashed in with, with shots and punches. It, I mean, it's, it's pretty brutal. I, I, I mean, I get that for sure. If someone goes down, they get knocked down, they'll take maybe two or three more shots or they'll get submitted. Mm. They won't give, get 10 seconds to get back up and clear their head and then go again. And that's, that's for me where MMA could be far more dangerous if we added the standing eight counts. As soon as you've taken a big shot in boxing and you've gone down, that count, you're concussed. Yeah. So you've, you're carrying on with a concussion. Whereas in mixed martial arts, if you pick up a concussion, almost always it's the end of the fight. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like you don't not, get, not taking the repetition of damage on the brain again, which is again where I feel like it's... Like in boxing, if you could knock someone down and finish with a couple more shots, yeah. it'd probably be safer, which is a weird thing to say, yeah. but you know it might be. No, I get that. But then you look at guys like Fury, where I imagine, I think the referee done an amazing job in the fight with Wilder, where he got up off the deck, his eyes were closed at a point, and he actually gets up and wins the yeah. rest of the round. Other referees may have called the fight then, so I suppose it's swings and roundabouts, isn't it? Yeah, for sure, absolutely. You don't get any of those undertaker moments in mixed martial arts where yeah. people can sit back up, but uh, yeah, for sure. I'll stick with MMA though, I think. Okay. <laughs> top-class MMA fighter will never beat a top-class boxer in the ring? Oh, it depends what kind of ring. I mean, if it's a kickboxing ring or a Muay Thai ring, then I, I fancy, fancy the MMA fighter's chances. I mean, in, in a boxing match, of course, you've got, to, you've got to lean towards the person that dedicates 100% of their time to one particular skill set. But I, I would never say never. I mean, never some say of the fighters, never. Agree. But it's all about who. It's all about who the boxer is and what their style is. Because, you know, you've got someone that's very slick and very kind of cagey and they're always going to make an MMA fighter look bad, I think. Mm. Whereas if you've got a boxer that's going to come in and open themselves up a little bit to try and win, yeah. then that's where they let the MMA fighters in. That's why McGregor was always going to be up against the wall with Mayweather because yeah. there's just no, I mean, how'd you get through? Well, that, that's it. And you can make the argument for, for both sports. If, if that, That's why the boxers aren't going into the octagon, really, or, or going into the MMA world because they know their chances are, are slim to none. What boxers come to mind that would be good to cross over to mixed martial arts? Like Tyson Fury, for example, for me as a fighter yeah. who's good at boxing, like would he be good in mixed martial arts? Um, I think potentially he could be, but not good enough to have his first fight against Francis Ngannou and beat him. <laughs> um, but I think with the right development and training, then he probably could be. One boxer that does spring to mind that I think could be good at MMA or could have been good was David Hay. David Hay actually done a, he was very explosive and, and powerful. He done a lot of grappling in his training. And I always found that really interesting. I never done it, but I trained alongside David a little bit. And I always seen him doing a little bit of grappling. It's a hard workout as well, gets him fit. But he was always using it as a means to kind of get out of clinches and stuff. I think, I think the haymaker could have been a half decent MMA guy. Boxing will always be more popular than MMA. MMA uh, and UFC in particular, uh, I mean, they're, they're, they're huge sports. It's a sport where up until, I suppose the May McGregor effect for me, that's why I got into MMA, because I, I started to enjoy following Conor McGregor. And I, I imagine there's a lot of people like me that get into it because of him and because of the character that he is. But boxing, when, when you have the big fights, um, I mean, it's talked about, it's on the front pages, it's on the back pages. Um, but again, they don't always happen. But when they do happen, it's special. But MMA as a sport that I think is still improving, um, still getting, uh, although it's got a massive fan base, it's still picking up more of a fan base. Boxing is where it's at now. And you've got some guys, maybe boxing fans, who were, now kind of crossing over and becoming MMA fans 
one of the reasons being that some of the you know, top fights get made in MMA. So I wouldn't necessarily agree with boxing is always going to be bigger than MMA. I wouldn't even agree with that <laughs> at this point in time. Really? I, I'm not sure. I wouldn't need to think about it, mm. but I'd say they're, they're both on a, a pretty level playing field. Maybe boxing just. Yeah, that's crazy to think about because a few years ago, people were even... They, they wouldn't even have the, have the conversation mm. about the two sports together. It, it's, it's wild. I mean, I, I grew up with boxing. I've always loved boxing. But for me, the accessibility of mixed martial arts is what's made the difference in, in the 21st century. Like, boxing is so divided that people kind of feel like they, they can't get invested in a fighter or they, you know, they can't follow on. Like, who else is in this division ready for them to fight? Mm. Mixed martial arts, you've got the rankings there. You know who's, who's coming up because they've got numbers yeah. next to their names. MMA is the future of combat sports. <clears throat> I honestly, yes, if you'd asked me that 10 years ago, I'd have said yes, but I honestly don't know where combat sports is going. But I, I do feel like MMA the, and the, the, the movement, the ferocity of the growth of MMA has, has certainly nudged all of the other combat sports into, into gear. I feel yeah. like boxing got a little stagnant and then with MMA chasing its tail, yeah. I feel like boxing's picked up uh, as yeah, well. Yeah, I can, I can agree with that. I think that... Um, there's going to be a place in the future, I mean, 50, 100 years' time, there's going to be a spot for MMA and boxing. It's not as if one of these sports is going to be wiped off the planet and one's going to completely take over. I think there's always going to be boxing fans and there's always going to be MMA fans and there's always going to be people like myself who like both and appreciate both. Last one. <laughs> who would win in a fight between Carl Frampton and Dan Hardy? Of course, they were going to throw that on the table in front of us. Well, well I'm a bit too fat for you. Well, I, I don't know if you are too fat for me. <laughs> I, I'm, uh, I'm, people keep approaching me in the streets and oh, you, you look in half decent shape. You're still training. I'm not doing any training. And <laughs> I must disguise it really well because if I took my shirt off now, you would you'd probably laugh at me, as my kids do. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I wouldn't be too confident that beating my own dad at this point in time. He's 65. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, what, in MMA or boxing? Oh, either. Okay. Either. Okay. Um, right, okay. So, would you beat me in a fight? Probably, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would agree with that. <laughs>